probably aware of the microphones at this point. Phil Elverham and many other members years ago were pretty significant in the world of indie folk music because of the album The Glow Part 2. The albums before that did not seem to get anywhere near as much recognition in the internet era as The Glow Part 2. It's definitely considered one of the greatest folk releases of all time. It's only really climbed up in popularity as uh, popularity as the years have gone by, even if it isn't the most well-known, recognised album in the grander scheme of music in the world. But, you know, the people who know really know what this album is. Definitely one of those cult following albums that really, again, without the internet, would not be anywhere near as significant in the world of music, indie music particularly, um, as it is today. I like it. I think it's a very pleasant listen. I obviously see why people love it as much as they do. I don't think I quite love it as much as everyone else seems to. But I feel like Phil Elverham has this really earnest approach to his songwriting, as depressing as it can be at times, as really uh, sad, as detailed, as vivid as he is as a songwriter, and has only really gotten more and more detailed and vivid as years have gone by uh, under the Mount Erie name too. Um, you know, you can see why people latch onto this kind of music. You can see why, you can see why. With each release under the Mount Erie name, I've kind of lost a little bit of that excitement for what Phil Elverham is doing these days. But in fact, the microphones uh, haven't put anything out in under this name. Phil Elverham has not put anything out under this name for a very long time. So of course, this one did get a lot of attention through the fact that it's been such a long, long, long time since the microphones have put anything out. But it's different this time though, as it is actually just Phil doing everything. As according to what I can see on the personnel, this is all Phil doing everything here. The percussion, the, you know, the drums, the, the guitar, everything, all him. Do correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't see anywhere else stating otherwise. And it's a very lengthy piece of music too. Microphones in 2020 is just one long recording, 44 minutes. You do get some interesting changes instrumentally throughout. So really cool moments too in regards to the instrumentals, but it is essentially one, one long, long piece. And the love that this album is getting so far is incredibly strong. People are head over heels to this thing. People obviously love what Phil does as a songwriter, as a lyricist, as a vocalist too. So it is pretty clear that the people that have loved him throughout all these years would gravitate to this album too. Unfortunately though, as I said, with every passing release, every new album, I'm just kind of finding myself losing interest in what Phil does. And this album is quite a patience tester too. So I guess it wasn't really all that surprising that I would find myself struggling with this one more than anything else. I do truly mean patience testing as well. I feel like Phil lets you know this very early on. He is not messing around <laughs> with testing that patience as he has this simply plucked acoustic guitar that goes on for like seven minutes. The chords barely switch up. It's a pretty simple riff that kind of gets repeated. It's just something that I think you could find yourself soaking in, kind of getting wallowed in, kind of, you know, just being addicted to, sort of like basking in the simplicity of it. Or like me, you're kind of ready for it to change up because it's a long, long period of time before you really get the vocals coming in. And I feel like you could shorten this part as well. You could probably drop it to like three minutes and it would work so much better. Or you could at least bring in more added instrumentation to beef this section up. Again, I feel like people are going to love this part. Are you going to be like me? And you're just going to think whatever I could do without this. But I, I can see both ways. I'm sure you could too, even if you do love it. I don't think I'm going too out of the ordinary here by saying it just gets a bit tedious. And once his vocals come in, it's not the most like exciting part of the track. His vocals are very soft and delicate. They've always been like this, but it's not like he brings anything to the track that makes me totally engaged. The lyrics are immediately reflective as always with Phil Elverham, always just looking back to the past, thinking about things, mulling things over. I think this is an album where he really takes it to the extreme though, because much of it ends up being quite story-based and he's very much just reflecting 
on things that happened so many years ago, talking about the microphones, the birth of the microphones and how it came about and where they went from there. Like a lot of it is just very much every minor detail packed in to this entire piece of music to the point where some parts just feel a bit unnecessary and he's kind of just going on and on and on about things. There are a couple of moments where he attempts to be very poetic and very vivid with his words that don't really land all that much for me personally. Again, this is probably just for me more than anyone else because I feel like you could read these lyrics and adore them or you could read these lyrics and not really get much out of them. That part where he talks about the uh, state of all things like being a waterfall that part isn't exactly that you know uh, interestingly written just not really taken aback by how he words himself there I do like the part where the electric guitar comes in though and it comes in at the part where he says I remember where I was and I just like that bit because it's almost like his brain is clicking into place like an aha moment as the electric guitar comes in exactly as he says that bit I think that's a pretty clever way of just getting into the like the the nitty grittiness of the story he's wanting to tell I, I, it's a nice little detail that he threw in there to add on top of that as well it just adds a bit of spice to the track because like I say we're going on for quite a long time with this really simply acoustic guitar you know plucking that Phil is just kind of like sing talking over it just brought in a bit of diversity that I feel like was much needed but I think this is at like the 11 minute stage though so it's a long period of time of just this simple acoustic plucking. It becomes very apparent that we're hitting like Mark Koslick levels of songwriting or even the most recent Bob Dylan album as well where he just goes on and on and on and on about talking about things for such long periods, adding in every detail. It just never appeals to me. Like the most recent Sun Kill Moon albums have done so, so little for me. That This Is My Dinner album was atrocious. And the most Bob, recent Bob Dylan album was pretty bad as well because it just never entertains me in the way that, you know, singers just go on and on, picking out every detail. You know, friggin' Phil's talking about like crouching tiger hidden dragon for a little while on here he gets into the details of like the birth of microphones just reading it honestly reads like a podcast it really sounds like he's just in a podcast for 45 minutes and it was like a fan requested thing in that he just decided to talk about everything that happened in his career it really reads like that the whole thing reading the lyrics every bit just feels like some kind of interview where someone's asking him questions and he's like, well, you know, I was about 17 or maybe I was about 20 years old and this happened and this happened. Just the explaining of these details never makes for interesting music. I feel like, again, it could be the other way for you as a listener where you're listening to him talk about these things and it really does entice you and over this instrumental too it just might make for a really pleasant listening experience because it is pleasant there's no denying that but it just gets a bit long-winded for me it, very long-winded in fact you could chop these little sections down to the most important bits and it would probably make for a much better listen i think i do love it about like the 21 minute mark ish where the instrumental gets so distorted and he just sounds like he's drowning in this really strange like whirlwind of fucking weirdness that part is great like i think more of the track could have dealt with this i feel like we could have had more of this and especially when it comes so far into it like we're halfway through at this point this probably could have come in earlier i think i would have started to enjoy it a lot more if we had more of these really bizarre instrumental freak outs. During this part he mentions talking about like seeing stereo lab and random other details too. Um, I, I, I like this bit though because as harsh as I'm going to sound here you can't necessarily make out what he's singing and to be honest the things he's singing about ends up being the worst part about this album most of the time so when the instrumental just kind of drowns out him I'm pretty happy just listening to this really weird like psychedelic trip. After that though it quickly goes back into what we were getting before and he tells us about a hiking trip. I could list out all the lyrics but 
I don't really feel like it's necessary because what am I to say about these lyrics when they don't really interest me and they're not particularly written in a, a way that makes me interested or makes me want to keep going back to this album on a regular basis because it's a bit of a struggle. The interlude section is pretty cool though and then once we get back more into Phil's singing the drums actually become a bit more of a prominent part which I think is a nice addition again. This is quite far into the 44 minutes at this point. Might have been better to bring this in earlier. But again, you could look at it two ways. You might say, actually, the way it builds is really good. And if you brought it in earlier, then it would have built a bit too quickly or something like that. I don't know. But for me, I probably would have just preferred all of this to be near the start of the track. Again, with more like vague meandering with some of the lyrics, you've got the part where he says, weather moves across the land and doesn't have a reason ripping uncertainty beneath my bones just feels like an overly like mellow dramatic way of describing something to me uh just doesn't really get me picturing anything to be honest but you might i don't know he tells us about how you know the microphones kind of became a bit of a defunct thing and moving on to mount erie more of that interview portion of this album where it just feels like he's telling us things and listing things just really not engaged with this as much of the acclaim this album seems to be getting like could you imagine going back to this in a year's time i i could be completely wrong but like just listening to this on a regular basis i'd love to know um, you know, what people think of this because I feel like once you've listened to it once, once you've read through all of his lyrics once, you've kind of got the picture, you've got the full picture and does it really have as much replay value going back to it again and again and again? Like I'm kind of asking this to the audience here because I just sort of struggle to see how you'd be able to go back to this regularly. I don't know. I found the final moments of this album very odd though, the lyrics that he reads out where he says, um, every song I've ever sung is about the same thing. Um, standing on the ground, looking around, basically. Um, I, I, that's, that, that's just a bit odd. Like, is he completely like undermining the entirety of his work by saying that? Is it just what people say about his work and he's just regurgitating like the critics or the, the people that don't like his music? I don't know, I just found that bit a bit odd. Maybe I'm reading into it wrong, I don't know. But just a bit of an odd way to end things off. Just, you know, undermines what his work has done and what his work does. Just seems a bit, a bit strange. But even aside from that, look, there's just so much here that's so difficult to take in all at once. Like, there's just so many lyrics, so much that just goes nowhere, really. It's just a difficult listen. Like, it just doesn't engage me from start to finish. Some of the instrumental moments are great. W would have loved for more of that to kind of take over this 45 minute piece here, but it doesn't always. And I'm just kind of left feeling a bit, eh. Clearly not for me though. I think if I was more invested in the microphones and Mount Erie in general, I'd probably love this because it seems to be appealing to more of that core audience anyway. But I'm just not really here for this one. I'm going to go 5 out of 10, unfortunately. Definitely not going to go down well. But I've got to be honest. I've got to stay true to myself. I've got to tell you how I feel. And that's just how it is. But thank you for watching my review. Before you leave, a very angry comment telling me I, I, I know nothing about anything. And I don't know what I'm talking about. And I'm terrible. And I need to quit YouTube. <laughs> Before you do all of that. I don't know. Do whatever you want, actually. I'm not gonna hear to, I'm not here to tell you what to do. Do whatever you want. If you want to do that, that's fine. I'll probably laugh at it. Tell me your thoughts in the comments. Try and be nice. <laughs> Try. Thank you for watching my review. Hopefully you enjoyed what I had to say, got a different perspective. If you love this, please let me know your thoughts. If you think the same as me, let me know your thoughts. Thank you. Subscribe if you haven't already. Have a good day. Have a good day. Have a good day and goodbye.